Are you ready to take off? We are heading up in the air today. Hi, it's Therese and Lost in Paper and I've got some great Alan Hudson products to share with you today, starting with some clouds. Now I want to make my own handmade stencil here and I've cut two of the images from some acetate and I'm just going to use this to simply add clouds to a piece of Nina 80 pound cardstock which I'm going to use as a background. I'm using my life-changing blender brushes and just working my way from the base of the cardstock towards the top and as I'm going from the bottom to the top I'm actually making my clouds a little bit darker as well. I am using my fingers on the edge of the acetate to make sure that I don't over blend into the cloud that's next door because I did find this is actually my second attempt I didn't like the colors that I used on the first attempt so I came in with the it's a boy blue which is a really pretty blue and what I am doing here is actually flipping my cloud around I ended up only using the larger of the image because it had the smaller bumps on the bottom of the cloud I could actually just flip that round and get two different sort of styles of cloud in one so here's my bright idea. I thought I'd try and make it into a bit of a sunset background. So I started off with some purple, went to some orange. It mixed poorly. It didn't look very nice at all. So to sort of cover that and to save this piece of cardstock, what I did was come in with some darker blue and some aquatini and that seemed to work. And I only did that near the top of the piece of cardstock here. And I end up covering up most of that orange in the end. And I actually did end up cutting the panel down a little bit too, which helped. And now this is the coolest thing. I've got this airship from the Up in the Air stamp set. It has some really cool elements. It's designed by Brandy Kincaid and she always has such fun elements in her stamp sets. And I stamped it with, with some fade out ink from the ink on three because I wanted to do some no line coloring and I'm getting better at using this stuff I'm used to it now when I first used it I thought that it faded <laughs> no it doesn't fade you actually color over the ink and it's like the um, medium that you're using so you can use it with watercolors with Copics and also with pencils it kind of picks up the medium that you're using and takes on the color so you can't see the lines when you finish coloring well pretty much you can't see the lines depending on what color you're adding it can seem a little bit but it's certainly not like using a black which is what I was thinking about doing here I'm really glad that I didn't know because I think this ship ended up pretty cool I did try um, like the Y21 it was too kind of browny yellow so I ended up just sticking with these three colors here and made the center of the ship sort of the highlight because it's gonna look a little bit rounded it could I think you could also call this a blimp although airships I think airships are bigger does anyone know I think are the blimps the things that carry advertising around in the skies as opposed to people? I don't know. I don't know, but it's cool. I haven't seen this in any other stamp set yet. It's just something that's really quite unique and fun. So I did end up colouring the whole image all one colour except for the propeller, which I coloured in with the T2 and did not like the way I did that. So in the end, I did actually put my zero marker over to lift up the gray ink from the propeller and just came in after I die cut it and drew the propeller back in just with a gray lead pencil and that seemed to work fine and I added the T2 as shading over the whole image and I think this really did help give the image some depth I was um I wasn't pressing very hard at all and you probably could have come in with a lighter gray and got been a lot safer <laughs> with your shading I have a sentiment here it's from the totally random sayings volume one 
and I've got it stamped on a piece of acetate. I'm just wanting to work out where it is. When I was happy with my placement, I sat the stamp over top, picked it up with a misty lid, and then stamped it with some obsidian black ink. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it stamped over my image initially, but once I sat it over top, I was sure that I would. And I didn't want to take the chance of stamping it and then not liking it and have to start again. So that was just one way of me having a look to see if it was something I was going to like to do before I committed. I used the spruce ink from Catherine Pooler here to stamp out, I'm going to call them the Jetsons because to me they look like the Jetsons. <laughs> They're a real retro family who are looking up at the balloon. Airship, I should say. I've cut my panel down, added some foam foam to the back and popped that up on the front of a top fold card popped up my little crowd of the Jetsons and also popped up my blimp airship with my sentiment on top. <laughs> now I've also got another project at my blog so don't forget to head there through the link in the description below and if you like this video uh, click on the thumbs up button and if you haven't already I would love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you again here real soon. I've got heaps on at the moment and lots to see and enjoy so i'll be back real soon till then happy paper crafting bye <laughs>